Welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Monday, May 29th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Topping the news, a fourth child has been charged in connection with the May 17 beating of a Lester Vaughan secondary school girl. The 13-year-old girl appeared before Magistrate Ian Weeks at the District D Magistrate's Court today. She pleaded not guilty to assault occasioning actual bodily harm and was granted $500 bail. Her three co-accused made their second court appearance today. The 15-year-old girl who pleaded not guilty last Thursday changed her plea and was remanded to the Government Industrial School. The 14-year-old boy who was remanded to the GIS was granted $500 bail today, while the 16-year-old Kavia Smith, who spent the weekend at the Majesty's Prison at the Dodds, was granted $1,500 bail. All four will reappear in court on Thursday. In other news this Monday, close to a dozen workers were today given their walk-in papers as part of an ongoing restructuring by Actevo, the company which contracts services for Digicel Barbados Limited. This morning, the workers met with management at 8.30 at the company's Manor Lodge St. Michael office after they were notified of the meeting by letter last week. When they emerged, workers declined to comment on their dismissals, but the company's public relations manager, Gary Gibney, spoke with Barbados today. Activo is resizing its pool of human resources in Barbados in order to create greater efficiencies and meet the needs in the market. A consultation process with staff is currently concluding. Of paramount importance during this process is ensuring that all employees are treated in a fair and respectful manner. In other news this Monday, the Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations of Barbados wants education authorities to scrap their decision to allow cell phones in schools in the upcoming term. C2Sub says the decision is ill-conceived as it voids support for the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union and the Barbados Union of Teachers, which contend the move will result in more problems for the already troubled school system. The trade union body admits that while there is a place for the use of technology, its introduction must be carefully weighed. It noted that while the technology could empower students, it is also likely to reduce the authority of the teachers to exercise control within and outside classrooms. Tomorrow is Budget Day in Barbados. Finance Minister Chris Sinclair has been holding the details close to his chest while Barbadians have been sharing their expectations. Our Anmar Goodrich Boys has the details. In less than 24 hours, Minister of Finance Chris Sinclair will deliver his annual budgetary proposal and financial statement right here behind me in Parliament building. It's likely to be his final presentation before general elections are constitutionally due in 2018. Now, Minister Sinclair has already warned that it will not be an election budget and government will not be giving away what it does not have. But are Barbadians paying any attention and what do they want from the budget? I want to know first thing first, right? If or what they're going to do with lower the prices or raise the prices. They're talking about bus fare, I don't know about that part. But what I'm saying, and carefully, I know that when they call the budget, and whatever happened, I think the people in Barbados, they spent too much. That is my gift, and that is what, I, not my gift, that is what I'm talking about. Yeah, we're spending too much. So I hope in the budget call that we can spend less. That is all the gods say. I would love a raise up here. That we're talking about the budget. A plus two, my income tax, I get my income tax return yet. I will look that there too. So I, I want to talk about it tomorrow and send the whole assembly. That all I have to say. What was your expectations though, your biggest expectation? To change the government. That's the biggest thing I want to say. Change the government. If we change the government, I feel we get all my money. Things still good in Barbados. If you compare a lot of countries to Barbados, things still good here. But you know, we're the players that like can't play anything. But you know, the budget, you know, that you could do with it, but that you can pay, you can get there free and, and other things. You got other things. People got the things. And that thing, we, 
people don't understand that we we not producers, we we, we we got no real resources. We resources is the, the people. And we got nothing that we, we, we everything that we, we think we got in port, we got to do things. You know what I mean? And still holding on as a, a cut good. About the budget tomorrow is about the expense about the Rami here, the girls buying, about the big the big cars I'm driving, about the it was all the they got things they want, but they may saying that we got an expense in here. And if Chris Sinclair give us a budget with back tax, everything we deserve it, cause the normal, we be just cause this on ourselves, the crop over the events, the reggae shows and everything, we cause it to be on ourselves because nobody can accomplish Peter Pay Paul Paul Pay Paul. So there you have it. Barbadians had their say on tomorrow's budget. Now all that is left to do is to wait and see. Reporting for Barbados Today, I'm Anmar Goodrich Boyce. There's regional and international news after this short break. Good morning, Phillips and Company may help. Oh, certainly, one moment, please. Miss Phillips, yeah. there's a lady on the line from the nation newspaper who would like to speak with you. The nation? Will she go on? Well, they're trying to sell us some ads. <laughs> Don't make me laugh this morning. Ads in the nation? They're real expensive, and for one year, nobody ain't buying them papers no more. Nobody ain't want to steal news. I hear reading Barbados today online for free. So I tell she thanks for calling, but no thanks. We just advertise in Barbados today, families. Tell she is Barbados today all the way. Okay, I'll pass on the message. Mom, are you still there? The Barbados Today, news you can trust. To the region now, in the Cayman Islands, it's Premier Alden McLaughlin and the Speaker of the House, Makiva Bush, again. The two long-time political rivals met with Governor Helen Kilpatrick this afternoon to confirm they will be forming a coalition government of national unity following last week's general elections. Now, after five days of steady negotiations, McLaughlin managed to cobble together a 12-person government consisting of all seven elected Progressive Party members, all three elected Cayman Democratic Party members, and two independents. Progressive Deputy Leader Moses Kirk Connell was confirmed as Deputy Premier. McLaughlin said he was seeking cooperation from two more independent members in joining the government, but he did not have confirmation of those individuals to join the government as of Monday afternoon. And on the international scene, at least 11 people were killed when a severe thunderstorm hit the Russian capital, Moscow. According to meteorological officials, it was the deadliest storm to hit Moscow in more than 100 years. The winds of up to 110 kilometers per hour were described by meteorologists as extremely rare for the city and caused structural damage to buildings. Hundreds of trees were toppled and more than 50 people sought medical help. The city was lashed by hail and torrential rains. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, our screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic evening.